Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today, we're going to continue with step number five in our seven steps to healthy living. You know, many books and blog sites and social media influencers today are writing of the need to declutter our living spaces, to become a minimalist, getting rid of things we really do not need and live a more simplified life. In other words, they're telling us to get rid of the junk in our homes and our lives. Well, today I want to suggest to you that this decluttering might also be a good idea in our daily eating habits as well. Returning to a simple lifestyle of eating real food might take decluttering our grocery shopping carts, our kitchen pantries, and even what we are eating every day. Hopefully by now you've joined me in this journey of healthy eating and living and you've discovered that bread, only real bread though, made from freshly milled whole grains, has truly changed your life and the health of your family. And you have personally experienced the significant health benefits of this one simple change. And you can say like myself and so many others, It's the bread. It's got to be the bread. But hopefully your journey like mine doesn't stop with just this one change. You've moved on and you've begun to pay attention to what you're drinking as well as what you're eating. You've begun to drink more water. Fermented foods such as yogurt, kefir, and fermented vegetables have hopefully become a regular part of your meals along with a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables. And you and your family are now enjoying not only better health, but the delicious foods that God has given us. Just as we strive to declutter our homes, step number five in this journey of healthy living might need to be get rid of the junk that we're eating. Many years ago, I read a quote by Dr. Katz, the former head of preventative medicine at Yale University, And he stated that more children are harmed by poor diet than by drugs, alcohol, and tobacco combined. I found this statement both alarming and quite sobering. I know that as parents, most of us work diligently to do what is best for our children and to train them up in the way they should go. We spend time and energy warning them of the dangers and temptations in this world. Nearly 50 years ago, the extensive work of Dr. Ben Feingold proved the connection between harmful food ingredients, such as artificial colors and flavors, as well as the preservatives, BHA, BHT, TBHQ, and the negative behavior and learning issues that so many children and adults, for that matter, were experiencing. His mission was to generate public awareness of the potential harmful role of these synthetic additives to our food. When I think then of the food, and I say that sarcastically, marketed to our children and us adults as well that are harming us by contributing to our overall poor health, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and even behavior and learning disabilities, not to mention serious food addictions, I am not only saddened, but I'm seriously concerned. But this only encourages me to take a more serious look at what I am eating and what I'm feeding my family. This led me to step number five in my seven steps to healthy living, to get rid of the junk, to look more closely at all the foods I was personally consuming and those I was bringing into our home. While for my family, and even today, our junky splurges are only peripheral, they are still there. 
If you think again with me about the foods found in the grocery store, you will realize that once you leave the perimeter of the store where the real food is located and you start down those food aisles, once you get past the canned fruits and vegetables and condiment aisle, every other food aisle in that grocery store is filled with heavily processed grain products, usually with a lot of added sugar and most often artificial colors and flavors. For us, eliminating all white flour products by making all of our bread, cakes, cookies, muffins, pancakes at home from freshly milled flour had, of course, eliminated most of these overly processed foods we had been consuming. So if you take that first step and you change your bread to real bread, you are more than halfway there in getting rid of the junk in your diet. And one added benefit of real bread for our family is that the bread we were now eating was very satisfying and filling. We were no longer hungry between meals. And I began to notice that my kids simply didn't snack anymore. Studies show that about 30% of our daily calories actually come from snacks. Snacks are where we most often find the junk we need to get rid of. Even those snacks that appear to be healthy choices are often loaded with sugar and other non-food ingredients. If you read the ingredient labels like I started doing, you might find some surprising ingredients that you never thought would be in there. For instance, did you know that most pickles have yellow dye in them? I was shocked. Yellow dye in pickles. My grandmother never added it to her pickles and they look just fine. So why does it need to be there? Unless you buy an organic brand of pickles, it's probably there. I remember years ago on my quest to take this next step and get rid of the junk in our diet, I took my weekly shopping trip to the grocery store. As I headed down the food aisles, I decided I was going to read every label of some of the snacks and food items I had been buying, mostly for convenience and as treats for the kids. Well, I can tell you this. I spent about an hour that day in those aisles and I bought none of those products that I had been buying. And I headed to the produce section to buy more real fruits and vegetables instead. You know, eating a fresh fruit or a vegetable or even a muffin or a slice of bread made from freshly milled flour in place of those less than healthy processed snacks can help get rid of the junk in the snack area of our diets. Kids, especially young children, do not typically overeat. They fill up quickly, so it's important to watch their snacks and their treats and make them count. Remember that a less healthy snack or a treat will crowd out their desire for other foods, especially at mealtime. So if you are struggling to get your child to eat at meals, look at those snacks you might be giving them in between. It is important for me to mention here that it's actually best not to snack at all between meals. We should really allow about three to four hours between eating to give our digestive system time to complete its task. Your stomach often growls to let you know when it's time to eat again. That sound is most often the sound of the food and liquid in your stomach now moving into your small intestines to complete the digestive process. Since fruits and vegetables are digested more quickly, if your diet is strictly plant-based or you have low blood sugar issues, your time between meals may need to be shorter or a healthy whole grain snack might be the wisest choice for you. There are few ingredients that I am quite serious about not consuming. White flour, of course, but also hydrogenated fats and oils, artificial colors, flavors, and sweeteners, which often show up in the most unexpected food items. Early in this journey, when I first began making our bread, I learned of the processing done to hydrogenated oils and how these oils cannot be properly used by the body, and they're quite detrimental to our health. And you just might be surprised how often they are used in some of our favorite foods. I choose to use extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and real butter in my baking. 
I have just recently discovered Georgia-grown sunflower seed oil, along with pecan oil, pumpkin seed oil, peanut oil, and benny seed oil that are so delicious, you can taste the freshness of the oils. And they are all produced right here in Georgia without the use of any solvents or heat. This is key to look for in seed oils. Just because a label says that it is cold-pressed does not mean that no solvents have been used. It is important to purchase these oils from a reputable source so you can know for sure what you are getting is the real thing, and that especially includes olive oil. We now sell all of these oils, except butter, at Bread Becker's. Artificial sweeteners are high on my list of junk that I will not consume, Most are known neurotoxins that should have never been approved for human consumption. And it saddens me that the diet industry markets these products so extensively. Eight years of collected data showed that your risk of becoming overweight by drinking one or two cans of soda per day is 32.8%, but your risk actually increases by 54%. If that soda is a diet soda, these beverages are simply not worth the health risk. And as these studies show, they do nothing to help you reach your desired weight, not to mention that they are highly addictive. Now, I'm not trying to guilt trip anyone here. I'm just hopefully making you more aware of foods and ingredients that could actually be sabotaging your health and your weight loss goals. Another word of caution, do not be fooled by the term sugar-free, as that usually means an artificial sweetener has been added. And do not think that artificial sweeteners are limited to sugar-free products. Today, even products that contain sugar often contain sucralose as well, a more recent artificial sweetener on the market. When aspartame, a brand name NutraSweet, first was approved for use, products had to be specifically labeled visibly on the front label, noting its use in the product. Such labeling is no longer required for aspartame or sucralose, except in the list of ingredients. It is more important than ever to read those ingredient labels. Like stated earlier, you just might be surprised by what you have been eating and drinking all along. I know I was. I mentioned in step number two, drink more water, that many of the fruit infused brands of water actually contain artificial sweeteners. I was surprised to discover this. And so was a young mom in a class where I shared this information. She had switched from soda to drinking more water. To make the transition easier, she had chosen several flavors of fruit-infused water. She was drinking half her body weight in ounces of water every day, and she had no idea she was now consuming an artificial sweetener in abundance. It is simply not safe to assume anything these days when it comes to the commercially processed and packaged food sold in the store. If you stay mainly on the perimeter of that grocery store for your shopping, you are fairly safe. But once you head down the food aisles, it is more important than ever to read those labels. Another thing I learned in my quest to get rid of the remaining junk in our diet was to make healthy choices more readily available. I found that my kids, as well as myself, will gravitate towards foods which are much more convenient, especially when we're hungry. If chips and cookies are in the house, those will usually be our choices. But if a big bowl of fresh fruit is on the table or carrots and dip in the refrigerator or cups of homemade yogurt instead, we will eat that and be happier and healthier for it. In this step of getting rid of the junk, it might be important to start with one small step at a time, just like decluttering your home. And instead of focusing on what you're giving up, think instead of what you're now going to enjoy. Psalm 78, 18 says that though God had provided manna from heaven and water from a rock, as the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, says they tempted God in their hearts by asking for food according to their selfish appetites. 
I find that when I'm tempted by some junky treat, I try, try to ask myself, is this treat going to promote my health or compromise my goals? In Haggai verse 5, the Lord tells us to consider our ways and how we've fared, to thoughtfully reflect on our conduct and how it is working in our life. Through the prophet Haggai in verse 6, the Lord goes on to say, You have planted much, but you harvest little. You eat, but you do not have your fill. You drink, but you do not have enough. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns them to put them in a bag with holes in it. In verse 7, God says again, Consider your ways. This perfectly describes where we are today. We eat and we drink, but we're never satisfied because we're tempted to eat and drink things that man has created instead of what God has given to us to nourish and to satisfy. But even more importantly, we earn wages to spend on food that is actually robbing us of our health so that we have to spend so much of what we earn on doctors medical bills, and medicine, supposedly to make us well. To me, this is a perfect picture of earning wages to put them in a bag with holes in it. We must begin to consider our ways and how we have fared. To put it in more modern terms, I like to ask, how's that working for you? Maybe just set one positive goal as simple as I will eat one piece of fresh fruit every day or I will drink eight ounces of water before I drink any other beverage. You might soon find that this one goal ripples into better health, improved behavior, and the desire to set other goals as well. I call this the ripple effect. This ripple effect was dramatically demonstrated more than 25 years ago through a school nutritional lunch program started by Paul and Barbara Stitt, the founders of Natural Ovens Bakery in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, at the Central Alternative High School in Appleton, Wisconsin. The students were out of control. The principal's office was swamped with disciplinary issues. Drug use and dropout rates were high, as were attempted suicides. The students carried in weapons, and tensions were high among both the students and the teachers. How did they correct these issues and turn this school around and others like it in a very short time? By getting rid of the junk. Yes, that's right. They implemented the school nutritional lunch program. Nothing extreme. They simply replaced the prepackaged foods they had been serving the kids for lunch with real food, fresh fruits and vegetables, salads, meat, and whole grain breads. They eliminated all food colorings, preservatives, sugar, and processed foods. They did not go organic. They continued buying from their regular food suppliers. They just made different food choices, real food choices that were reasonable and not extreme. To further get rid of the junk, however, they removed the candy and soda vending machines and made only bottled water, milk, and real fruit juice available. By the end of the school year, every teacher noticed a change. Classroom behavior was better and arguments were rare. The students were now more focused and more productive and grades were up and the dropout and truancy rates were down. When the principal filed the year-end report, dropout rate, student expulsion, drug use, carrying weapons, and attempted suicide were now all at zero. The principal also discovered that the nutritional lunch program cost no more than the previous commercially processed foods they were buying. And the ripple effect besides those improvements seen in academics and behavior, were no more need for security guards. And the school now had peace instead of chaos. And the students themselves noticed the difference. And they were happy and they now wanted to learn. Remember, this was a school for the troubled kids. 
If getting rid of the junk in a school full of troubled teens could bring such noticeable improvements, think what it might do in each of our lives. Years ago, I read a quote that I absolutely love and that speaks so clearly the message I want to share. Eating good food, no matter how simple or elaborate, should be one of life's greatest pleasures, not an endless guilt trip. I do not remember where I read this, so I cannot give credit to the author other than saying that it is a powerful truth stated simply. If the food you are eating is making you feel guilty for eating it instead of simply giving you pleasure, including health, it just might be the junk you need to get rid of. Now, I would love to tell you that my eating habits are absolutely perfect, that I have no junk in my life, but that is simply not true. I struggle with decisions and choices just as you do, often at events outside of our home. I often have to ask myself, is the snotty nose or queasiness I experience from eating that sugar-filled dessert worth it or the headache or mild agitation? And is the compromise worth it? But thankfully for all of us, if these compromises are the exception and not the rule, then so will the effects. But I pray today that God will give all of us the wisdom as we seek Him on this journey of healthy living and give us the commitment we need to get rid of the junk in our life. Until next time, I am Sue Becker from Bread Becker's with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Becker's Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.